Warning, do not attempt the following experiment without adult supervision. Hi everyone, my name is Shabrad Rukra and I'm the scientist wannabe. Today we will be doing a lab called the Gummy Bear Osmosis Lab. The lab we are doing today is quite commonly done in a grade 10 biology classroom. This right here is my formal lab write-up sheet. The question for today's lab will be, which solution will cause the greatest change in the gummy bear's mass and dimensions? For this lab, we will be having three types of variables. The first will be the manipulated variable, the responding variable, and the controlled variables. The manipulated variable will be the change in the size of the gummy bears from the start until the end, depending on the solution. Now to the responding variable. This lab is being done to investigate the effects on gummy bears when they are put in a certain type of solution for 24 hours. Now for the control variables. The gummy bears are constant in visual size, the amount of solution and the type of clear plastic cups used to do the lab. Here I now have my hypothesis. Here are the materials that will be used in the lab. Here we have a procedure from steps 1 to 6 for today and steps 1 to 2 for tomorrow. Step 1 of the procedure is to record the mass and dimensions of the gummy bear that will be going in each solution on this observation table. Step 1 is now complete, and if you did not know how to find the volume and surface area, I've provided formulas here, you can take a look at these. For next step, we will need to label the Dixie Cups. The next step is to measure 100 grams of each solution. The next step is to is to measure 5 grams of salt, which we have right here, which will go into this cup. The salt has now gone in. Now all we have to do is thoroughly dilute the salt inside the water. The next step is to add the gummy bears into the prepared solutions. The time was 7.46 when I dumped all the gummy bears inside, so I'll be using my handy dandy iPod. Two, turn on a 24 hour timer. The next step is to individually put plastic wrap on each of the cups to avoid contamination. Now all we have left to do is wait 24 hours to see which solution will make the greatest change in the gummy bear's mass and dimensions. See you guys all tomorrow. It has officially been 24 hours. We will be starting with distilled water. Can't wait to see what these look like. So we will be using this spoon right here to carefully take out the gummy bears and the gummy bears will go into a bowl. It's about right here. They're really fragile, so be very careful. Okay, the gummy bears in the spoon. Oh, that smells good. So here we have our first gummy bear, huge, huge, huge gummy bear. Next, we will be taking out the red gummy bear that is coming from tap water. Next, we will be doing the salt water gummy bear, which is the green gummy bear. It appears that this gummy bear is actually broken in half naturally by the salt water. So salt water gummy bear, nothing left of it. It's all in bits and pieces. Lastly, we will be doing our Coca-Cola gummy bear. Hopefully this one's not as destroyed as the one that came out of salt water. Just by looking at it, this gummy bear actually looks bigger than every single gummy bear, which I'm surprised. I was expecting this gummy bear to turn out destroyed. 
here we have the yellow gummy bear, well, now brown gummy bear. So here we have it, these are the final results. In first place, we have distilled water. Second place, we have cola. In third place, we have tap water. And to my astonishment, which I thought we would be able to save it, was salt water in last place, which we have no results for. Here I have my conclusion for you guys to read. That's all for today. We are done with the Gummy Bear Osmosis Lab. I have an analysis question for you. How does this lab relate to osmosis in cells? I want you guys to think about that and feel free to write the answer in the comments. My name is Shabraj Rakharov and I'm the scientist wannabe. See you guys next month.